Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am Andrew Hockrottle. I'm Ted. <laughs> we did it. Um, and this is an Adobe Firefly stream. We're going to be showing you all about Gen Fill, Firefly compositing, putting stuff together. And I believe we're going like into a dream state is kind of where we're going to exist. Yeah. Imagination. The Imagination Station. All aboard. Um, nice to see you in chat. Hi, Kayla. If you are tuning in, oh. let me know where you're watching from. I forgot how words worked as that sentence went on. <laughs> Happens to me all the yeah. time. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're coming from our <laughs> Discord, go ahead and leave a purple heart emoji in the chat Ooh. so that we know that you are coming from there. Um, Ted, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let everyone know who you are, what you do, all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Ted, aka Ted's Little Dream. Uh, I'm an artist based in San Francisco. I also do uh, photography. Uh, my things kind of focus on fantasy, you know, like dream space and like animal and like nature, spirits and everything. Something fun, right? Escaping reality, you know, yes. just like daydream is like the theme that I like to go with. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. All right. So we are going to daydream together, um, chat, which means that you can make your suggestions. Uh, I will be doing some generative fill for, or sorry, some text to image for you if you have ideas of things that you want to generate in Adobe Firefly. Uh, if you want access to this, it's open. You have it. Happy Pride. Um, it's it's our gift to you. Um, <laughs> if you need to get generative fill and you don't have it yet, there also is a very easy way that you can get that. You can go to apps in the Creative Cloud desktop app, and then you're going to scroll down here to beta apps, and you'll be able to see the Photoshop beta that is not updated as I show you the Photoshop, be Photoshop beta. <laughs> you can go and download that. It is open to mostly everyone. I believe that it is uh, mostly uh, English speaking demographics and over 18. And I think that there's some like enterprise accounts restrictions as well, but you can go see if you have access to the beta and we're going to be using generative fill a lot today. So go check that out and look at all the discord friends. Woo. Oh yeah. I see the purple. That's a really right? good idea. You know, I love like, that. Hey, yeah. I just want to like, discord. Yeah. where are y'all coming from? Uh, also yeah. lots of people, Costa Rica, Pura Vida. Hello. Oh wow. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and hop in. Um, I'm actually going to generate one thing before we go. If you were here for the last stream, if you missed it, we had someone that requested a Ooh. lizard scale texture. So we're going to look at lizard, lizard scale, scale texture. texture. <laughs> and I'm just curious what this would be. We used uh, texture a lot in the last stream, and we used uh, generative fill to generate those textures. So I'm curious to see what happens oh. when we do it over in Adobe Firefly. Do you usually use text prompt or like uh, a font or? Like, what tool you use the most on Firefly? I'll, uh, I don't use the text <laughs> effects that much, but I do use the text to image a lot. Um, that looks cool. Oh, wow. That's a really cool. So using that as a texture, pulling it into black and white. Uh, again, Firefly is a really, really great resource to generate some textures. Again, not for commercial use at the moment, but you can play around and tag at Adobe Live on Instagram. Um, and someone's saying, Firefly is not good with lizard scales or skins. Well, I don't know. This looks pretty good to me. <laughs> um, all right. So let's go ahead and hop over to your screen, and we can talk a little bit about where we're going today. Yeah. Let's see. So is it empty canvas right now? Yes. Um, yeah. So I kind of go with that. I'll give you guys some like, well, I don't know if it's tips, but it's like usual process how I usually go. Um, I open a new canvas. I usually like to set the ratio by like 60 inch by 20 inch and then like 300 DPI. It's like maximized for like Instagram or social media posts and for okay. like printing, you know? Yes. But yeah, and then anyway, so I went on the Adobe stock website. If you type like stock Adobe, dot com slash free. There's like a whole bunch of like free images you can for license free? Yeah, for free. For free, I know. I didn't even know it until like last week, so two weeks ago. It, I was like, it feels oh, like such free. a hack that it's like, ooh, type in promo code free after the URL, right? and then it just gives you all <laughs> of the free assets. I know. I've been using all my credit. It's uh, great. Yeah. So um, I kind of like my my thing is always like kind of like focus on like surrealism, right, and dreams. So usually I'll kind of like pick an animal or like, you know, select like a theme or like something I want to work on today. So um, for some reason, I thought about elephant would be a cool idea to work on. Yes. You know, um, so yeah, let's go from there. Um, so I'll drag them straight into my Photoshop. Usually that's how um, I do it because it's like converse um, straight to smart object. Yes. So I can like change the size and don't have to worry oh. about like resolution. Yes, yeah. being able to not have to worry about scaling it down and then you scale it back up and it's just like, there's like five pixels left. And you're like, what happened? Yeah, I know. Just leave it as a smart object. You can use smart filters. You can do all of the things. Uh, don't work non-destructively. Don't convert it. Don't rasterize it. Just work with it how you have it. I know. Um, so yeah, and from there, kind of like 
Today while I was like going over this, I was like, oh, you know, it would be cool to like have my main subject and build like a fantasy lane with the gym fill and firefly just to see like cool. what some crazy cool thing we can do, you know. Yes. So um, And it looks like we're going to the like we're going on safari maybe. Uh, <laughs> Chat, if you have suggestions of what you would like to see on our imagination safari, uh, let us know. And as we go, maybe we can incorporate those into our composition here. Yeah, so like the, the best thing for me is like when I'm making art, you know, just go free and go wild. You know, just like yeah. there's nothing impossible to dream or think of, right? And, and it used to be challenging, like you have to know all this like, um, a lot of skills to do, but now with like Photoshop's helping and a lot of tools, it makes it really easier, you know? So yes. it's like. And it you, speeds up your process. Like it's stuff that you would have done otherwise in a lot more time. Mm -hmm. You can do it way quicker now, um, which is really exciting. Yeah, so uh, what was that layer? Raster layer? Um, what was that word go? Uh, there you go. Raster layer, there's, there's yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is, I'm I mean, in the beta. <laughs> yes, we were talking about that uh, on another stream that the menu, when you right click on a layer, is the most expansive menu, I think, in any <laughs> Adobe product. Like, it's just like, oh, what do you want to do? All of it? Great. <laughs> I know, right? I was just like, whoa, wait, where's the options? Sometimes, I, even though I use Photoshop for like eight years you know, yep. or nine, I, I still forget like where the tool is at. Like, yes. where, where is it, you know? But Speaking of tools, I think that we just used a new tool uh, that got added, and I believe that this tool Mods, correct me if I'm wrong, I think is in regular Ooh. Photoshop as well as the beta, and yes. that is the remove tool. Um, where is that tool for those that want to use it? It's right here where usually um, the healing brush tool is or um, the patch tool. It's like if you uh, right click, I believe, right? Yep. And the second one, the remove tool, you know. Um, What's that other short key? Is it a whole shift and J that you jump in between tools? I don't know, actually. Uh, let me see. Command J. Uh, I don't know about. Yeah, maybe? Oh, yeah. So when you hold shift and oh J, you can jump between tools. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it on the left side, but you can see like it's changing tools. So same as like uh, most of like clone tools and everything. You didn't know that. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> I. Okay, so any hotkey that you have for a tool, you hold shift and it will cycle through those. It will cycle through, so it, yeah. So like mar marquee is M and then you hold shift. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's so <laughs> helpful. I don't know where I found it uh, on tutorial somewhere. I was just like, oh, like I just been using it like all yep. the time. Just like, oh wow, this like made my life yes. easier. So we use a remove tool to remove that tree. Super easy, you just paint over the area. You can do a very specific selection, but you can also do pretty broad selections and it will do just fine. Yeah, and then uh, you guys might be curious like, why to duplicate the layer, because uh, um, for me, like, I forgot what was the actual term called, like constructive workflow or something. Like I non-destructive. Non-destructive. Non yeah. I always like to have an options to go back if I made a huge mistake or like I yes. want to rework uh, the whole file. You know. Yes. So we're confident in our skills, but not confident in the application of them. Sometimes <laughs> it's <laughs> so gotta have a backup plan. Just a backup, right? just in yeah. case. Yeah. All right. So we use the select sky there, and we are gonna maybe pull out the sky to replace it with something else. Uh, I'm just playing around with this, so okay, I kind of yeah. like create a layer because now I can like put the elephant into there, you know, just kind of like imagine like, oh, in the oh. big scale, that's like where the elephant would big be. Big boy. I do need to remove these textures here though. I oh, see, whole shift, you can just like switch in that's between. That's so cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we have been getting some great suggestions from chat, and chat, I am taking notes of these. Don't think that you're not being heard. I got you, um, of the suggestions that you have given for things that you want to see. So we'll incorporate those. We're going to do a little bit of workflow, and then I'll come back. Don't I worry, I'm not, I'm not forgetting do you. everything. So I'm just going to roughly do it. And usually I'll go to the um, layers and like toggle it. Uh, Ooh, don't know what, I don't know what that was. That yeah. was a new dialog box. I've never I seen double that. click on it. I was like, what is this? You know, but anyway, I was just clicking to see, you know. It's like always finding something new in this program. It's like really fun. Let's see. Okay. Um, now, there, I don't know if this is in the uh, regular Photoshop yet. The color harmonize, is that? Yes, harmonize is, is yes. Harmonize so, is. Uh, yeah, the uh, neural filters are in uh, the wide release of Photoshop. You can go to window yeah. effect. I think it was a filter, neural filter, or? Yes, that's right. Yeah, neural filter, right there. But yes. Um, so yes, you can use that. You can use Harmonize, uh, which is a great tool to use. Mm -hmm. um, and it will pull everything together and change the tones. Yeah, and um, there's some other tools right here too, the individual adjustment. That's like some of my favorite to use before that uh, newer photo was the new options update with it. Yep. And I like the new update too. Now you can click on it and you can see like, before just like all oh, this icon there, you don't know what they are. 
But now if you like click it, you oh can see gosh, like yes. each of the names. I love that they tell you what they are now. <laughs> yeah. But still, it was a lot to look for. So some of my favorite to use is actually the uh, color balance. And then um, this is not like different technical. Well, it's like usually how I do the match the lighting, okay. color corrections and everything. Because, you know, well, I can use a color harmonization, but I just want to show you guys a little like quick tip. Well, let's see if they, oh yeah. So it's like a little bit purple. Like, in a way, like sometimes I don't know how to explain it, how I do the color matching. It's like, it's being like practiced so like every day, you kind of just like eyeballing it. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Man. And <laughs> again, like when you watch these workflows with people like you that are professionals in this and you're at home maybe just starting, uh, there's nothing wrong with just grabbing a slider and just like throwing it all over the place oh, to yeah, see what definitely. it does. Like see what it does and it's more important for you to understand the tools and kind of how you can use them together to achieve the result that you want. Uh, if you watched the last stream, we used all the tools wrong, but we got the right result. So uh, as long as you get to a place that you want, your workflow is your workflow. Yeah, and I always like to like, as you say, like drag it all the way left and right just to see like, oh, what does this do? Like, would it break it? Would it fix it? And it's like, oh, like it does what I wanted to do, or like unexpectedly, but it works great. Yep. Okay, so, well, I'm just doing like a quick tone changing for the elephants. It's like nothing too important yet. Okay, so from there, usually I would just like start thinking like, okay, now I have a ele giant elephant on this land. Like, how do I make it more fun, right? more yeah. creative? So if you guys have any idea, feel free yes, to Yes, there was a really great chat. suggestion to make it more fun, and that was Ooh. putting in a dancing tiger, I believe. That was from uh, <laughs> Moni. Uh, Moni is, suggested a dancing tiger, uh, which we could probably generative fill and see what happens. Um, I'm very excited about this one. Generative fill? Oh, should, should we use Firefly or generative fill? Which one, which one do you think it will work? You do generative fill, I'll do Firefly. Okay. Uh, and we see. can see what happens. <laughs> I'm very interested to see what generative fill does for a dancing like, tiger. Let's see if I break this. I was like, well, not break, but. Ex ex explore what, what oh, options. Breaking things is my favorite. Anytime that I can get a program to like have an unexpected result that's like, that's a problem, uh, it's my favorite. Where is the dancing tiger though? Is it right. on the back of the elephant? Oh yeah, or? yeah. I think it would be in the foreground. The foreground. Yeah, like maybe somewhere in the foreground. And again, when you're using that's generative really fill, right. you want to make a selection that is the size of what you're going to be putting in. Uh, so if you're doing an apple, you want a big selection for a big apple, small selection for a small apple. So let's do dancing tiger. This will probably be a small dancing tiger. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> Excited. Uh, and while that renders, we can flip over to my screen because I yeah. used Firefly text to image to do dancing tiger. Yes, it looks way uh, better. And we've got this one here. Uh, he's got a couple extra tails. That's all right. Uh, we have this one here, which is absolutely yes. Uh, I love that he's got like a little like tail bangle. Uh, this one is great. He's mid Macarena. Love that. And then this one's definitely doing a hand drive, like a little like moment. Uh, okay, we're regenerating over there. <laughs> regenerating. <laughs> uh, while we do that, a question from uh, Cynthia. Please, each time I import an image texture on Photoshop, the image texture will change to gray. I would look at your. Um, Color settings maybe are set to grayscale. Ooh, Dancing Tiger. That one's really cute. And what's cool is from what you just showed us, right? We generated this and the colors are like really off, mm -hmm. but we can very easily change that uh, by masking out that tiger and applying those same colors, right? Super easy. Probably just do a quick select subject. Ooh. Oh. I like to click. Is oh, it interesting. Yeah. It grabbed, yeah, it grabbed the tusk because generative. Phil, how would he be grabbing the tusk? I don't know. I don't know, but it's pretty easy just to. Oh, I Get forgot it out the of here. tail. Bring oh, the tail no, back. Need that. Shoot. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. Let's see. Uh, do a little color balance. Is it more? I guess it's like more pink. So this is where I'm guessing, like, oh, do I need more of this color or that color? Oh, yeah, maybe more magenta into it. Yep. Yeah. Probably make it darker. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe just a general exposure. I know. Brightness. Oh. Oh Sorry. yes. So because generative fill fills in the entire space that you selected, if you do an adjustment layer, it will do that whole selection uh, at the there same time. Go. So I need to create a group and move that layer mask yes. to the top. Yes. And now I'm just targeting uh, the tiger only. There you go. Cool. We did this. This is like. Uh, there's also like this tool that I don't know if a lot of people use it. I find it like, 
I don't know where I found it, but it was right here, like selective color. Oh so yes. So what I usually do is that I pick the um, the whites, the neurons and blacks. Like I target those colors. So like um, sometimes you'll notice like when you're trying to do photo bashing, like the 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 blackness in the subject photo is in background photo is different type of black, yes. right? So like this help you to like target it like the um, to match it. Does that make sense? Yep. To you? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. A, a pro tip: If you are doing retouching or any kind of photo compositing, nothing is ever black. Nothing is ever white. Exactly. Like those colors don't exist in the real world. Um, and so I almost never use black or white. You always want to like a little version of it. Uh, my favorite is doing like a purpley black, so mm -hmm. it gives it like that like rich depth. I love that. Yeah. So this is like before and after. You know, it's kind of like matching that light bouncing around color, but. Sometimes I go back and forth, you know, just like, okay, I'll come back and work on this later. Yep. All right. Yay, that's cool. Cool. All right, so next one I'm gonna try to do, let's see, I think I'm gonna throw in this photo that I found on uh, Adobe Stock. It's like a split. Ooh, we're going underwater, thing. but also in yeah. Safari. And then we move this to the, well, sorry. Um, also, Top. yes, Oscar, Dancing go. Tiger, um, Dancing a Jig uh, gave some awesome results. Yes, uh, if you are generating things, if you are designing with us, tag us on Instagram, at Adobe Live. We'd love to see it. Maybe we'll repost you as well. Yeah, so one thing I noticed before is like, usually when I'm working on like certain racial composite, right, like I have to watch out like the space where like everything goes, but now with like gem fill, I can just like keep expanding my canvas. It's like, it's like, it's like more fun, you know. I can have like more free freedom of like design choice it's instead of like just sticking to that four by five. Yes, I love the generative fill. Um, I mean, it's it's similar to when Content Aware fill came out of when layers happen. Like it's a huge update, and to me, it's made the exploration like fun again, right? Like we both have used Photoshop for years and like have deep knowledge, and this is something that's like oh, it's new and like different and a fresh workflow, and it just makes things exciting and fun and interesting and kind of imaginative, which has been a fun journey. I say, name your layers, guys. Don't be like me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever named a layer. I know. Uh, usually I don't, but like I feel like I should set a good example here. <laughs> okay, now this is something really fun too. Um, I don't know if we talked last week or um, that you can merge two different photos together. Oh, I did see photo. you do this yeah. workflow. Yeah, so I'm gonna try it again. So uh, I want to make sure I sample the the sky from the bottom photo. Yep. And then the part of the sample from the the top layers, and then you know make sure I'm selecting the top. Yep. So I'm gonna see if this work or I have to adjust it because sometimes like it's simple too much from the lower ground. Um, I test this out earlier. It sometimes show like random rocks and like you know that uh, the stuff doesn't exist in your photo could pop out. So it's yeah. like, very interesting. But this is something really fun because we try like merging the night sky and the daytime, you know. And so hopefully that makes... Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I forgot because like this is like on top of the elephant. So I guess I need to Oh, so it's pulling the elephant it. in there, yeah. yeah. It's putting the elephant into, well, it's covering on top of that. Yeah. All right, so while you do that, we do yeah, have a question of somebody asking... Uh, in chat, where do you change the color in Photoshop? Let's flick over to my screen and I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. All you need to do is go up here to the top. And, sorry, I just got so exposed. These are my notes from you, chat. I didn't want to forget them. So look, <laughs> proof that I'm listening to you. Uh, you can go to image, mode, and then make sure that this is RGB or CMYK. So Cynthia is asking about some textures coming in. They always look grayscale. Um, go ahead and open the texture and then make sure that it is set to RGB before you put it anywhere. So try that, try to change the color mode to RGB. And even when you're opening it, sometimes you'll get a prompt that asks what you would like to create it in. So when you're creating a new document right here, this color mode, you want to make sure this says RGB or CMYK. Don't do grayscale or bitmap. So make sure it always says RGB when there's an option for color mode. Hopefully that helps your problem. Thanks for tuning in live. That's why we love Adobe Live, because you can ask your questions and we'll help you figure them out. All right, back to your screen. Oh, yeah. So the only different Ooh. thing I did was select the top part of the, the sky, because okay. I didn't want to block the elephant. Let me see if I can move this. Come down here, and then the bottom part of the ocean. So now I have these like really, really cool options of like the water blending sky, you know. For me, it's just like surreal art is kind of like putting like the two most kind of like unrelatable but relatable like 
contrast element together into one place. Yeah, making so the impossible that, possible. Yeah, so it's like you take a look. It's like, oh, whoa, like what is going on in here? Cool. Now we're gonna see if I need to change it. Good. Yeah. As always, chat, if you have suggestions, uh, I, I still have more suggestions for you, I understand. You just saw them, I proved to you that I have them. If you have more, I will gladly add them to this doc that I have on a Photoshop <laughs> canvas that I'm just typing on. Uh, so let us know if you have more suggestions here. Uh, and as we kind of add stuff here, we can incorporate yours as you go as well. Yeah, just sound like fun brain practice, brainstorm practice yeah. maybe. Uh, and I know that chat is going to ask at some point, yes. You are drawing on a drawing pad, right? Oh yes, yes. I'm using the the drawing pad. Just like it's easier for me. Do you usually use drawing pad or mouse? No, I have never no. used a drawing pad. I haven't. I, I actually oh gosh, this is gonna. <laughs> I actually like using the trackpad. So really? I like yes, I like the physicality of feeling like I am pulling and moving like with my hands. Uh, oh, interesting. Instead of like a pen or a mouse, I love being able to like feel it. Like if I had a touch screen, I would work on a touch screen all day. Um, but they're super expensive. Yeah, the I got I got lucky, so I have ones that's like pretty big, so I can draw like directly yes. straight on it. But this one is kind of like you need like eye coordination because you're looking yes. at the screen, but you're like not looking at where yeah. you're using. Exactly, and we're not even uh, looking at yeah. our screens. We're looking at a monitor that's I know. Like, camera <laughs> for you, chat. It's it's pretty far away, but we're we're making yeah. do. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, so we're harmonizing some colors. Lots of adjustment layers here to find kind of the right balance. I know. Sometimes it's like. I put stuff together, like, well, I just create a lot of layers. Like, they yes. might not necessarily need to be that many, but it's like, for me, that's just like the way how I work. You know? Yes. I have endless amounts of adjustment layers as well. I'm just gonna keep going vertical today. I don't know why, but I'm just like, I wanna keep going, you know? And then I'm gonna expand to the size if, if I breaks. I imagine <laughs> this being like something that is wrapping around and it like kind of just like keeps, like you print it and it kind of just goes around and comes <laughs> yeah, right. Or just like, just, I'm just gonna keep going vertical. <laughs> And see if this will work. Let's see. What if I type some cloud, cloudy, cloud, maybe cloud? Oh, yeah. Cloud. Let's and see. a lot of times you don't have to have complex. So it, the suggestion is between five and eight words for your prompts. Mm. Um, you don't have to go more than that. Usually going more than that will actually give you a more like specific result. So start very broad and then work your way in there. <laughs> I love that it gave you like just a straight up. So what, there we go. Oh. That's a little bit better. Yeah, maybe I don't want cloud. It's like blocking the whole thing. Yeah. I'm going to go back. Maybe fog? We want like a, like a soft kind Low of. No fog? Yeah. I'm gonna try it. If now I'll just like click generate straight, I'll just like take care of this for me, Photoshop. Yes. I don't wanna think about it. <laughs> yep. And if you don't put a prompt in, you can remove things by not putting a prompt in and hitting generate, but then you also can merge two things together by just hitting generate. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. It's really dense, but it's, it's interesting. Really dense, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Just oh, show you guys. A okay, way. so what you can do as well is with your selection. Um, oh, I just saw Paul do this. You can change the amount of fill on that layer. I don't know how to describe it, so I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. But you can change huh. the amount that it's going to generate fill, like the opacity. Um, and I don't remember how to do it, so I can't tell you. All right, continue we phone, on. We got a phone call, I'll call right away. Just like, hey, how do, you, how do you do this? I wonder if it's got something to do with any options here. But that's really cool, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so it will basically like, and that's how you get really good effects of like underwater, mm -hmm. is you have it fill at like 50% and it looks like it's underwater. Oh. Magic. All right, continue, oh, we're, what are we generating? We're just filling? I'm just letting it cool. take care of it. Like, hey, make a make a coolest thing. Yeah, we, yeah. I can work with that. Like, yep, I'm not mad about it. Yeah, that's cool enough. No, this is, this is a very small image. <laughs> It just keeps getting taller and taller and taller. That's that's okay. That's what we're working with today. Okay, I never really <coughs> like expand the water before, so hopefully it'll work. Actually, no, I Zero did. Times. So um, something to note when you are using generative fill on big spaces is it is actually better to do each side individually than to do them together. Really? Yes. So oh. uh, basically, the resolution. It is only generating 1024 by 1024, I think. Mm -hmm. So the resolution actually goes down when you do large areas like that. Ah. So if you do smaller selections, you can just piece it together and it will look fine, but doing them separately usually has a better result. I didn't know that. Knowledge. Okay, so I should do one by one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, one at each time. And sometimes if you zoom in and the resolution doesn't look great, 
split it into four. Um, again, the great thing about generative fill is it'll pick up those edges really easily and look pretty much the same as if you did it all oh, at the same time. Learning new thing every day. Right? Nice. I actually learned that from Paul as well. Thanks, Paul Trani. <laughs> uh, if you want to learn anything, just tune into one of Paul's live streams. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. oh that, yeah, that's that cool. Is, that looks good. That looks good for me. Oops. And what's cool is if there is like a weird seam or something looks a little bit off, we have the knowledge of Photoshop. We can go in and we can fix it and kind of tweak it. This is something that just speeds up our workflows. Yeah. And again, allows you to do things you could never do before, right? To resize, to reframe. I know there's so many social media clients that are like, Hey, this horizontal photo, I need it to be a triangle. Oh my and you're God. like, what? Yeah. And you're like, cool, generative fill. Here you go. Like, it's a triangle. Can now. we try this for the this this banner to this? I'm just yes. like, oh God. Oh, okay. Oh, that was really cool. Very different. That one looks spooky. Uh, wait, I guess we can replace the whole sky. I don't know if that will work. Maybe. Maybe. Should I try again or I don't know. I'm not mad about it. It looks kind of icebergy. Yeah, I know. Feel like, ooh, ooh, and great suggestion by Gareth. Set your selection to a fixed size of 1024 by 1024. That's a great oh. idea. And then you can just keep generating on that 1024. How do I do that? No, I um, don't know. I would, I would create a box that's 1024, uh, like create a shape. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Jump to your screen maybe? Like down here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, can, we can switch to my screen. Uh, do I have any images? So basically what you would do is you'd come down here uh, to the rectangle tool, and then you would just click, and then I could do 1024 by 1024. Oh. Right, and then it would generate, and then I can just use Alt or Command to make that selection. So that now could be I a new feature to have, right? Again. That would be cool to be able be to cool like feature, yeah. generate a size selection. I'm sure you could. Gareth, if you know how to generate a size selection, <laughs> let us know. Uh, that would be great knowledge to have. As I learn a new thing every day. I know, th this is why I love Adobe Live, because we learn stuff, you learn stuff, everyone learns stuff, and then we all get more creative, and we tag each other on Instagram, uh, which is really cool. Okay, now I have the part. Well, I guess we're just like having fun, so we'll, don't yeah, really have to not? worry about oh, the resolution. Yes, let's, let's go ahead and add something in from chat. Chat, uh, chat would love to see um, a, ooh, they wanna see like a, Volcano. Ah. That would be interesting. Let's see if we can add a volcano in there. Should I just replace the whole top? Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, what kind of volcano? Like, what is a volcano? Like, like an erupting volcano, maybe? Like, a, like lava on a volcano? Lava. So what do I type? Ah. Volcano. How yes. Do I, I wonder if we could put it just, like, down by the elephant, like a small little volcano. Wait, where? At right here? Yeah, maybe like on the side, maybe in the background, so that it's like uh, further in the horizon. Let's oh. See what okay, let's, let me try. I'm just gonna select it. Actually, I'm gonna put it right here. <laughs> yeah, that feels like a good spot for a volcano. Volcano. Is that how you spell it? I need a spell check. <laughs> Oh, and I'm just realizing, chat, we may have missed some of your prompts because we're on top chat and not live chat. Uh, can we switch over to live chat and we'll be able to see you live? I oh, was like, man, I'm taking forever to go back. Uh, we're seeing the most relevant chat. So uh, if we responded to you, congratulations. You were in top chat. Now oh, we're here live you chat. Go. We now Look at everything. you guys. Look at that. That is not a volcano also. <laughs> what? What? Did I spell it wrong? I think I spelled it wrong. The, those, okay, if you've ever seen Annihilation, yes, that looks like the screen bear, like the bear that like became a whole bunch of different things. Okay. Wait, I want to put it, wait, that is how you spell Volcano, right? V-O-L-C-A-N-O. Yes, I think, well, I think the selection, yeah. V-A-L-C-A-N-O, Volcano. V-A-L. Yes, V-A-L. Okay, I spelled that wrong. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm surprised that it generated something. So usually if you don't spell something right, it won't generate it because it doesn't understand what language it is. Uh, so let's see what happens. Oh, there you go. No, no. The... Tim, Tim in chat. Uh, hello, Tim. My goodness. Uh, only English. Do we spell it? I think I can spell. V O V O L. V O L C A N O. Got it. 
Sorry, guys. Also, if you've watched Adobe Live at any point in the last like two weeks, the amount of spelling that you've heard us do <laughs> is insane. I know. Usually, I would switch to Google. Is that how do yes. you spell this Thank you, real chat. quick? You know, yeah. Please give me oh, something cool. Oh, okay. So you're saying with the rectangular marquee. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a top-down volcano. Interesting. Because I know. Uh, oh. The gen does like. Automatically, like matching the perspective. Yeah, and so like, I wonder if the company is kind of like guessing what it's. Yeah, because I mean, there's there's not a lot of perspective yeah. up there, and so it's guessing. That's not bad. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I was like, what would be a, a, a good problem to say, like a, a volcano in distance, right? In yeah, maybe like yes, yeah, yeah, like a distant volcano on a mountain or something. Distant volcano on a. Mountain. And while we generate that, let's hop over to my screen because our man Tim has given us everything that we need to know how to do this. So we are going to grab our marquee tool, rectangular marquee. Then on style, I'm going to change this to fixed size. And then I can go 1080, or sorry, 1024 by 1024. And now let's see what happens. When I click, oh my goodness, that's so cool. It is keeping that size. Regardless of where I drag it, it is always 1024 by 1024. Wait, how do you do it again? Oh Sorry. my goodness, this is so cool. So I'm gonna go to a bigger, okay. So we grab the rectangular marked key, then we go up here to style and change it to fixed size, and then 1024 by 1024. Ah. And now instead of clicking and dragging, when I click, it just automatically makes that selection for me. Oh, that's really cool. Wow. Okay, that's really Wait, cool. But how do we, oh, but how do we, can we use that on like canvas expanding or? No. No, okay. Uh, you but could, sense, yeah. but we basically would just have to do like three or like as many oh, as Oh, I guess you take. drag it and then you do Yeah, oh. and that way you can just kind of like stamp it in. That's cool. So that would keep like the highest resolution. Yes, for the... yeah. Oh, and we generated like a nice little ice mountain volcano. Yeah, so I saw the note you took and it was saying like ice mountain. I was yes. like, wait, ice mountain might actually match better. For I, the water that we had. I very you know. much agree. Yeah. Oh, that works. Ooh. It's very, um, oh, wow. Those crystals are gorgeous. I know. Now I want to see, like, can I change the top to the volcano? Why not? Can you zoom in really close to see what the yeah, resolution looks sorry. like on that? I'm actually curious to see. I'm curious. Because we're talking so much. Uh, it's pretty sharp. It's pretty sharp. That's not bad. Uh, it's pretty good. Oh, you need to just like sharpen to a little bit. Yeah, I'm not mad about it at all. Yeah, because that's that's inches. So this is really big, actually. Yeah, I'm not mad. That's great. Wow. Okay, so adding something to the top of the mountain. Let's see if there's anything that chat has suggested that would oh, be relevant. Volcano. I'm still going for no. the volcano. <laughs> no is the answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see if we can change the top to a volcano. I love that. I know. I'm still trying. I, I'm not giving up on you, chat. We got you. We're here for you. So many people from the Discord. We can't let you down. I know. Oh, pressure is real now. Yes. <laughs> oh, Oscar is tagging us on Instagram. Let me see if I can pull that up so I can see what you're doing over here. Ooh, Give me a nice second. Wife, figure um, this out. I love that you are generating things with us. That's like one of my favorite things ever. All right. So. Uh, Oh, okay, that kind of worked. It's smoky. On the first one, it's smoky. Maybe like lava volcano, and then it'll give you some of that like lava. Okay. Now, I'm gonna try, I'm not sure how this would work, but I'm assuming that if I just select the lava shape, <laughs> that might work. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> That is not a bad idea at all. We'll try We'll try two different methods, right? Because I'm trying to learn and figure out how I can maximize use this tool for my workflow. Yes. And then how to like communicate with Jim Phil, right? Yep. So if I, I was trying this morning like, hey, like doing all different kind of stuff and I realized like, oh, there's like um, a lot of different way I can like talk to it. Just yep. like, hey, I want like this two different image works together. I want to generate some like certain stuff. It's like, 
I need to know how to make it understand my vision, you know? Yep. So. And a lot of times it's not necessarily about the whole picture you're trying to paint. It's about the pieces of the picture you're trying to paint. And so generative feels really good at adding things or removing things from scenes. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's not about, I need a volcano. It's like, oh, okay, I need a mountain, I need smoke, and I need lava, right? Let's piece those together individually, and sometimes that will look better. So let's see what happens. Lava dripping down from a volcano into the, oh, that's a good idea. I do think though that like, and this is where <laughs> I'm so confused. But wait, the second one. is pretty, okay, there's some lava there. Okay. Maybe I I'm need to so try like confused. bigger, simple, you know. I'm gonna just try this whole area. And what we maybe could do, um, let me see. I'm gonna try something too. Love on my ice cream. I know, right? Ice cream. Oh, we should just like find an ice cream picture and then we just build like mountains on ice cream <gasps> and with like volcano coming from ice there. cream. Ice cream. It's summertime. It's like June, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do is uh, generate lava on a black background. Can you do that too? Like you don't need any like symbols or anything? No, so I actually love oh, you to draw stuff it. on black and white backgrounds because then you can extract it really easily. Oh, that is so interesting. Um, let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna generate a fill. We're gonna do lava flowing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Give me a second. Lerva. Interesting. Huh. Okay, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try it in Firefly and see if we can get it. So I'm going to do um, flowing lava on a black mountain. I guess on result, different, but I understand. Oh, yeah, no, you got a good um, result. You got a good result, for sure. That's pretty cool. Yes, yours is great. Wait, I like yours better, actually. <laughs> but, it, like, getting it onto the photo is gonna be the problem. Oh, uh, that's true. Right, and that's where generative fill Did is Did you just so type nice. lava, or? Uh, I typed in flowing lava on a black mountain volcano <laughs> photorealistic uh, to try to get some of those elements, and I'm gonna change this to photo. And someone's saying generating a bit slow, slow PC. Uh, the reason for that is because everyone is using generative fill. Uh, <laughs> it actually went down last week because of the load of what's happening. So uh, it is all really? processing in the cloud. And so, yeah, so you do have to have an internet connection. It's not contingent on your system. If you can run Photoshop, you can use generative fill. Uh, it is contingent on the broader system. So uh, it is working really, really hard right now because it's new and people are very excited about it. So <laughs> it takes a while. Like, grab a ginger ale and... <laughs> yeah, make some tea, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Brainstorm, like, what yep. other cool idea we can come up with while, like, it's yes. doing its work. So what I could do that may work is I wonder if I can download this, and then I wonder if I can extract the... Like, do a color selection, right? right. And, like, pull just the lava out. Yeah, you know, something I tried today too was like putting a photo into a background and see if Genfield would like sample it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to grab everything here that is like orangey lava, and I'm using color range, and then mask this out. I mean, like, it's lava. You could probably like warp this onto your image, but it'd be a nightmare to composite in there. Um, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, and someone's asking, yeah, can I extract the lava? Yeah. Uh, I also think that I could, I'm here doing, I'm, pro I'm making promises that I, I, I don't think are actually true. I think I could click on remove background. Let's see what happens here. No. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you can mask it using uh, color range pretty easily, but it would be really hard to do. I think yours looks totally fine. Yeah, we can switch back to my yeah, screen. Yeah, let's switch back over. So this is like one of the results that shows up. It's not bad. I feel like it could be better, but I'll probably spend more time like working on it. But yeah. one thing we could kind of quote unquote work on is using like the photo filters. You Adjustment know. presets. Yes. So these are also new. And these are something that uh, will help you kind of pull your images together to give them a new look. And not only will it give them a new look, once you have that and you click on it, it will actually generate all the layers for you so that you can understand what the layers are doing and what's happening to that image to get that effect. Ooh. 
No, I'm just like picking my, you can like hover your mouse oh, on the top just oh, to see like. Yes, you can hover, which I believe with blending modes, it took forever to get the hover blending modes. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, that's one of my favorite things now is the live previews. And you can do it with scaling, you can do it in Illustrator. There are a bunch of places that have live previews now. And I want to be able to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it, like 100%. That's cool. I'm just going to see what we've done so far. Uh, I kind of miss the old sky. <laughs> I do like that sky. I oh wonder if God. we try to do a small mountain down in the, like on the, yeah, like uh, to the side maybe of the, the elephant side. and try to do like a distant mountain. I'm going to try my best. And chat, let us know if you have any other suggestions. We've got about 20 minutes left here. Uh, so plenty of time for us to do some suggestions for you. If you'd like us to generate some stuff in Adobe Firefly, we can do that as well. Yeah, so my tip would be like, usually when I'm working on this type of artwork, it's like going like mind exploring around, you know, it takes a longer time to like go on like stock website, you know, like 30 to like two hours just to try to find the right photos and color. Yep. But now with like the gym field tool is like really like speed things out. Yep. It's like, oh, like, oh my gosh, you know? look at the mountain that it generated in the background. Like it is so subtle <laughs> and so small. I don't know what that thing is. <laughs> is that like an ax just <laughs> flying through the air? Poachers. <laughs> it's probably simple from the top of the layer. Yeah, so. that's funny. Yeah. Uh, what other options did we have on that one? I know, let me see. Hot air balloon? Oh. Where you come from? And a mystic <laughs> castle. Got it. I mean, that works for the fantasy, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, the first one wasn't too bad. It's okay. And we can just mask that guy out. Now we have the perfect remove tool. Oh, we do have the perfect remove tool. Can I use on this? Oh, I don't think you can use it without rasterizing it. Aw, that's fine. We'll rest it. Destructive workflow. Oh, no. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, mask, mask it off. Yeah. Um, it might be easy just to mask it. <laughs> yes, and yeah, uh, asking to generate some animals flying in the air. I agree. Maybe up in the sky we could do some little herons do, do, or something. Do, do, do. All I'm thinking about is the scene in the Lion. I was trying to think of animals, <laughs> and all I could think of was the scene in the Lion King where they're all like bowing down. There's just like all the animals. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna be like, bye. Oh wait, no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Run tool. I'm gonna not do that. I Don't just did do that. that. There you go. Easy, easy, easy. It was never there. Never there. I only there. know a mountain. Yeah. All right, so maybe oh, do some perfect. little birds or something. Bird. What kind of bird? Chat. What oh, we already had a suggestion for a bird. It's bald eagle. Bald eagle was in there. Yes. Uh, wait. So this this the amount of size I select would just depend like. Decide the size of it, right? Yes. So if you do a small one, it'll generate so a if I in the background. <laughs> if I this is going to be a big very big eagle. <laughs> I think we should go for it and see what happens. Bold. Oh, go. that, Gareth, is, yeah, that's a good idea. Is to make a backup of that layer because then you can go back to it uh, if you need to that's rasterize right. something or mask it out. Yeah. But oh, actually, it doesn't matter because we masked it out. So it's totally. Yeah, fine. we mask it out. We're just playing with it. A giant bold eagle. I really, so I, I've done things that like, the phrasing makes sense to where I'm like, oh, uh, a crow holding a dollar, right? And I think it's gonna that be works. like in the beak, but then it is like a crow with like arms that's holding a dollar. And so I'm curious about a bald eagle to see if it will do like an actual bald eagle or if it's gonna give us, okay, I mean like, different. The, again, I think that the, because our oh. composite is so crazy, the uh, perspectives are just like losing their mind because it's like, where's the sky? And it's like, oh, the sky is the ground, and then there's a mountain, and then there's more ground. What do we do here? Talking about that, I was playing earlier too, right? I was trying to figure out, like, if I do want a subject or animal to be generated, like, what else do I need it to know? So I try, like, side profile, or give it, like, a direction oh, facing left yeah. or right. It kind of, like, you, like, tell them, like, what perspective you want, right? So, well, that didn't <laughs> still Same, 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 same. <laughs> same, same, uh, you know, close enough. Uh, can you change the perspective of something you generate? No, but you can designate. So I've done like a uh, dog running away, dog running toward me. Um, so you can you can change it in your prompt, uh, but you can't left. augment it after the fact. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it again. Uh, something that you can do, though, over in Firefly. Oh, let me not make, yeah, let me 
Uh, Not yet, yes, no. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, I'm trying to, so there are these options here, shot from below, shot from above, so oh, let's see right, what happens right. if I change it. So it's just composition down at the bottom, and so I'm gonna add that as a filter and generate and see what happens. Um, so this is something you can do in Firefly. It will generate those based on, uh, and they're not that different. Uh, so it, it depends on the photo, I think, with how it's going to look from the perspectives depending on your prompt. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that you can control it that much. Yeah, I tried typing like flying across the sky facing live and say, okay, it's kind of working. Okay, yeah, no, no, we got it, we got yeah. it, we got it. I'm gonna make it smaller. <laughs> A tiny little, oh, we're, yes, just into the background of like, I don't know, it's just, yeah. it's there. We'll, we'll see how it works, you know, make, make it smaller. Also, because like the canvas size I have right now, like, remember we start with like the regular size of the elephant and we expand it all the way vertical and to yep. the side. So it's like, Got it. it's huge, you know. Yeah. And you also can make, um, I mean, when you make it smaller, you understand more. I was like, how it will actually like, that's pretty good resolution. Oh, that's that's really good. Yeah, that that's actually good. shows you're right. <laughs> the the resolution being smaller is better. Um, you also could do multiple selections. So like yeah. if you made a bunch of circles, I'm uh, curious if you made like three or four and then typed in bald eagle, if it would generate a bunch of bald eagles. Let me try. So I've only done this with bubbles is the only way that I have done a this bubble, before. Right? Oh, that's smart. Because um, I sometimes in uh, product photography will want to use like bubbles. Yep. Then you have to go on stock, finding the white, and then mask it, or the photo oh, you shouldn't. And bubbles like preserve transparency. They do reflections. Like bubbles are so oh, good if Jenner wow. fell. Bubbles, puddles, and chrome all look really cool because you get reflections in every time. Bubble. I'm gonna try big we're gonna, size bubbles. We're gonna add bubbles to this. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna see. Got, we're gonna see if it we works. got ten minutes left and it's going to be bubble time. <laughs> bubble. Bubble buddies. Oh, that from um I think it's a little sponge oh, bubble. That works. Yeah. So yeah, you can see there it generated a bunch of birds on each of those individual selections. So if you want to do a bunch, to go uh, you can do that. If you want to do a flock of seagulls, if you'd like to do a murder of crows, or even oh, a flamboyance yeah. of flamingos. Uh, that's really cool. That's wow. Those okay, wait, bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, so if you do big bubbles like in the foreground, uh, it's going to create some really cool I'm bubbles. Try it. And even one like over the Just elephant? Bubble? Yeah. Bubble. Yes. First time generating bubble. <laughs> I'm curious about a single I've only done multiple bubbles, so I'm curious about a single bubble. Um I'm like And also we can try generating it over Yeah. There you go. Oh, what? So we can try generating it over some area on the edge too that has some like variation, and you'll see that it's actually gonna pick up all those elements. Can I put it on top of it? Why not? There's yeah, no rules. I'm gonna hide the Birds, so it doesn't Whatever we imagine is real. Bubble. Bubble. I'm gonna go home and make like a whole bunch of bubble stuff. It's just gonna be <laughs> bubble stuff. I'm gonna pose on that. Hey guys, today I learned about how to make bubble. <laughs> What's really cool is I think we'll be able to see some distortion on the back of that hey. elephant. Ooh. Oh. There we go. So you can see, see how the color is augmenting the thing behind oh. it? Oh. That is really cool. It's really cool. Uh, and then, oh, let's do this. Let's put a puddle a underneath puddle. the uh, elephant, right, in that like open area right there. And what's cool about puddles is it will take into the context of kind of what's around it, and it's going to give us a reflection of that elephant. I'm making promises. I'm making big promises before we see it, but it I should think work. That's the I try. I tried the other day. It worked. Yeah, sure. Sometimes I give in different. Because I did the uh, I did lake on the last uh, stream. Oh yeah, yeah, and it worked really well. We even put like a mini dinosaur like next to it, drinking I water. I love little dinosaurs. I know. Do do do. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Cool. And I like that it's reflecting the sky up there of the. Oh, that's really good. Can yeah, we zoom in? I'm curious about the reflection on that one. Yeah, I think it worked the best with like landscapes. Yeah. Those reflections are so good. Ooh, oh, this is like frozen wow. lake. And look, you can see like the texture in the skin. Like it literally looks like it is an That's elephant. Crazy. That's so crazy. And the dancing tiger. I like the dancing tiger. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, all right, chat. We uh, okay. That's perfect. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's yeah, it's perfect. Um, all right, we have one more thing on here that we haven't done so far, and that is a boa bob tree. 
A what? I don't know. It's a kind of tree, boabob tree. Boa, bo, boba? Bo, a boba <laughs> tree? Um, okay, let me try it. Boaba tree. I'm just, I'm just yes. imagining as the shape of it. I think that it's, yeah, I think it's like, I think it, that's it. That's really cool. Let's see what happens here, chat. Okay, and I, I think this is sure it. I'm spilling everything right. Yep. Oh, so like, I tried to do this earlier. Um, I got a, a deer, right? Like the background, and I'm trying to generate like the the tree branches, like sakura, uh, cherry blossom tree, onto oh, the top of cool. it. Cool. Even like many different results. Oh, that, oh, that, that tree. tree. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, like the safari tree. Yeah, I got it. That's I got funny. It. We're like both like what tree? Is like oh that tree. That tree. Can we see the different options on that one? Oh yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Because I use a lot of like trees in my work too. So it's just like oh you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, do yeah. this. I don't, know, I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll try. I'm gonna turn the trunk to the tree. Oh, I love that, yeah. A tree trunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess I'll just type tree. Tree. Yeah. Let's we'll see if it works, if it, if it doesn't work. Cause like, sometimes the, the jam field doesn't understand, you know, like. I think it will work. Yeah. So I try, I try this few different things, right? I try typing the tree, select the shape of it, and I try um, having a tree PNG and then like have the the gap in between the yep. the tree trunk. I mean the elven trunk and the tree, and then I generate film the in between gap, and it worked too, you know. Oh, in the Lion King, Rafiki lives in a boabab. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. Kind of, that's kind of cool with the, with the right like tones. That could yeah. be really cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull flower. Now I'm just going crazy right now. Just like, I want to try this and that, you know. Let's see, my art club, uh... Oh, it was Nim. Bobo Tree Art Club. So how do you pronounce it? Bo, 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 Sorry if we were, like, not <laughs> Just as remember, right. chat, let us know if you know how to pronounce it. Oh, look, he's holding the flower. All for me? Aww. Aww. No, for you. For I'm you, just, chat. <laughs> it's for you. It's just for you. I That's forgot. Really I pointed cool. at you over here, chat, and not to this to the camera. <laughs> You're over there, chat. Hello. The chat is there. Bow the Bob. There. Okay, yeah. Bow Bob. Got it. Bow oh, Bob. a zebra seahorse. Uh, yes. Let's try a zebra seahorse. And Oscar, I don't have access to the Instagram as we're streaming right now. Oh. I can only see it after the fact. So I'm sorry. Uh, I, somebody that has the phone right now is getting all kinds of notifications for you, and they are not in the studio oh, right now. But like I will look after. Oh, okay, one last thing. Do, yes. we, do we have time? Do we still have time? We got three minutes. That's more than enough time. I don't know how this will work, but I'm gonna try this. Butterfly wing. Wing? That's two word, right? Butterfly wing. Is it gonna replay the year? Year? Oh, no. Yes. Maybe not. Uh, I wanted no. to pull like a yeah, human. Just, yeah. <laughs> it butterfly was, wing. We're gonna yeah. try butterfly wing and see if that works. Be, be careful when you're like, Wanting to add more because sometimes adding more makes it worse. Like uh, yeah. I think a hundred percent it would have been just a human yeah, ear. Human. It could uh, be really scary. Yep. Yeah, because especially when it's taking the context. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's the right shape. Close enough. Yeah. And we can kind of just blend it in, maybe. Oh, it's so cute. If I just had the flower. Sorry, chat. I took the flower away. <laughs> <laughs> Get that out of here. I wonder if I can. I could probably just brush. Brush, Ooh. brush, brush. Yes, and that's a great suggestion, Oscar. I'm gonna do that real quick uh, in Firefly so we can see it. Yeah. Oh. Actually, that's really cute. Give it like a really nice contrast on that. Um, I could probably go to. Bo -bo -bo. We're gonna do. Uh, someone's asking, do you know if Generative Fill will be added to other Adobe apps like After Effects? I don't, but I do have, oh, look at these little seahorses. Um, uh, we you, wanna... you had to switch to the screen to show the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Hop over, yeah <laughs> let's hop over here and show these cute little seahorses. Um, look at these little fellas. Zebra seahorses? That's Aww, really cool. So Wait, cute. but I can use that gem fill on um, Photoshop directly to make that, right? This no, be you could try, though. You could try. It's the, it's that, uh... Oscar just put it in there. Uh, and somebody asked, um, what did you type? Uh, Zebra Seahorse Macro Photography, there's a lot of things there. 
Uh, so someone asked, is it coming to other programs? Don't know. But what I can tell you is that on firefly.adobe.com, you can actually see things that are being worked on, right? And I don't think Adobe does this very often. It's really cool with the transparency of what's on the way. Uh, 3D to image, extending image. Uh, as we scroll down here, I think that there's more, yeah. So personal results, text to vector, text to pattern. So there's all kinds of fun stuff here. And this video also demonstrates some of the stuff that's coming. And so there are a lot of use cases that it shows in this video uh, that shows some video use cases, which are kind of cool. So um, I don't know what's on the way. The future is unknown. Uh, but it's going to be amazing regardless of what it is. Okay, we got it. Kinda it kind of worked. It kind of worked. <laughs> kind of worked. We got a nice little zebra at seahorse. Yeah, because I felt like, well, I guess we did generate the tree without having yep. a tree too, right? That's so great. It kind of worked. I was cool. just curious, you know. Yeah, so let's zoom out. Let's show the whole image uh, and uh, kind of wrap up for the day. Mm -hmm. So today, we worked with Generative Fill. We created this awesome, amazing composite all together using Generative Fill. Um, all right. Closing question for you, Ted. Yes. For those people that are out there that are trying to get creative, that are trying new things, what advice do you have for them? Uh, pick like 10 your top favorite artists. It doesn't have to be the same category. Like photographer, illustrator, uh, designer, all different kind, right? And then like put their work next to each other and trying to figure out like what do they all have in common and what they don't have in common, right? The, the second one is easier, but like what, what they all have in common is pretty hard. But once you figure that out, then you kind of like get to understand like what it's in there that attracted to you. Yep. And then use that to like help you on your creative journey. That's that a great really idea. Yeah. yeah. So go look at people's stuff, get inspired, watch Adobe Live, follow us on Instagram, <laughs> and just have a great weekend, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.